What's going on, Predators? So the title of this video is intentionally misleading. So is this the best gear ever that you've ever used? Reviews? No, absolutely not. And what I want to do is really talk about the psychology of what brought you here today. With every year, the manufacturers, in order to stay in business, honestly, they have to release some kind of new update or new gear in order to be competitive in the industry and you know make sure that archers have options out there for new bows and things like that. The thing that I'm seeing a lot is though that people feel like if they don't buy the new gear, if they don't buy the new broadheads, if they don't buy the brand new arrows, that they're gonna be left in the cold or that they are going to be missing shots or they're not gonna kill as many deer or whatever they're hunting. And I'm gonna tell you that's obviously patently false and I think a lot of us deep down really know that. But there's some nuances in this discussion that really need to be talked about as well. And if you're using gear that's too old, there might be some issues there that you can solve by either updating that bow or getting a brand new one or you know, doing some preventative maintenance on the thing as well. But before we get into that, I just wanted to thank the sponsor of this video, and that is First Form. So it's probably no secret right now that I have been obsessed with using the First Form products because I have gotten into the gym a lot more lately. I have a lot more free time on my hands, so I have been able to go in and really hit the gym and make sure that I am maximizing that time in the gym by using things like the Project One uh, pre-workout to really make sure that I get an amazing pump in the gym. I also have several other pre-workouts by them that are much more more endurance focused. I've also switched over to the uh, Formula One. This is the natural, all natural. This is a chocolate flavored protein powder. This stuff is really good, provides cold processed protein so that make sure that your body can use it and synthesize it and maximize your gains in the gym or whenever you're out in the backcountry trying to make sure that you are eating and living your best. Make sure you go check out those links down in the description below that help support me, help support the outdoors. First Forum has really dove in head first into supporting outdoors and outdoors creators like myself. Uh, they want to, like I say, bring a community of health and fitness and wellness to all of our industry. So go check it out. Thanks for First Forum for sponsoring this video and let's get into it. So I want to start this off by saying that I am just as guilty about this as probably any of you are. So one thing that I have done in the past is, like I say, I've always kind of hunted for a new bow because I feel like there's always just something missing out of, you know, my hunting. There's something missing out of my shots. You know, like maybe those couple arrows aren't grouping right. What is going on? And I feel like there's a instinct that's built into us as you know archers as hunters especially now in the more online sphere that everything's kind of done online and everything's seen online by a much broader audience i feel like we have a much more of a tendency to try to eke out every little last bit of uh, uh skill and every last bit of accuracy out of our rig so we can be somebody like you know you see like cameron haynes and john dudley and other people out there in these sphere that really are just amazing shooters as well and they have top of the line gear and so we feel like we need that top of the line gear as well so that we can be on the same level as them one thing i'll tell you and i've talked about this before on the channel i'm not the best shot i'm not the best archer i'm not the best athlete in the gym and i will never be but you know what all those other guys that show themselves on social media and girls for that matter as well are never going to be the best of the best either but what they do is their goal is not to show you how good you can be or what you're missing out on but i think their goal is to bring more awareness and you know bring more interest into the sport in order to get more people into it that can come with its own problems as well you know like say now we've got in some places like colorado and utah we've got so many bow hunters out there that you know it's getting hard to find a piece of land without 10 hunters on it to go out and chase you know big animals like elk and stuff out in the wilderness but the social media influence aside, one I really want to talk about is this. This is that I think instead of going out each year and buying yourself a brand new bow and a brand new set of broadheads and a brand new set of arrows and new fletchings and all these different things, that I think it might be better to really tune yourself and tune your skills. Use something like a shot trainer. You know, this is going to help you tune your skills, make sure that you're uh, – Several things that you're not really thinking about are really focused on, and you can see errors in your form, and you can practice good form uh, on the side. That is going to go a lot further than just buying new equipment every year, because I see all the time at Total Archery Challenge, and you know, I'm like, say, I'm slightly guilty of this as well, where we buy a new bow, thinking, okay, well, this is going to be the thing. This is going to be a great year. I'm going to shoot great and everything. And sometimes we do better, you know, because we have new gear that's well tuned and all that stuff. But at the same time, that new beautiful shiny gear can't 
can't make up for any errors in your shot process or you know lack of skill or bad aiming and all those different things so let's start with your bow do you need to buy a new bow every year absolutely not i've gone in the past for about two to three years with having the same bow the first bow that i bought i bought in i think it was like 20 12 or something like that and it was about a 10 year old bow at the time is a hoyt magnatech great bow uh but you know then i decided okay well i need something a little bit better so then i went stepped up and i bought a martin blade x4 and that was a great little single cam hunting bow and that actually stepped me up in my game a lot better i got a lot better during that time as well and so my shots my groups and everything were looking really good about two years after that uh so i think it was in 2018 i bought myself the uh Martin Max 33. Hey, great bow. And again, I'm honing my skills and everything. But while I was shooting that bow, one thing that kind of happened was as I, I thought, well, this bow is going to be doing so much better for me that I wasn't practicing my uh, overall skills, those fine skills that you need for archery as much. And so what I ended up doing was kind of falling off and I started having issues with the bow and, you know, like little tuning things like that. And I tried to fix it all myself instead of going to a professional and really getting that bow tuned the way it should have been. In. And uh, like I say, then I, what happened is I figured, okay, well, it's all the bow's fault. And so I stopped focusing on my form as much. And I think that was a huge mistake because I think it led me down a road where several issues ended up getting magnified. So let's talk about the errors and with the bow and how you can fix the thing. So one of the first things that I don't see a lot of people talk about, uh, there are some people that are talking about, but not a lot of people are really focusing on. A lot of common archers don't focus on your grip. So the grip of your bow is one of the most important things. This is your first and one of basically two or three anchor points that you have with your bow. So if your grip is not good, if you're not holding the grip right, if you're doing this, it's going to cause a lot of form issues. And whenever I grab my bow and the shot process, that is the very first thing that I look for is I look to make sure that I've got a good grip. So before I even raise my bow up, I've got it resting on my knee or whatever I'm sitting on. I've got my bow resting on my knee and I'll have my grip down, my bow down and ready. And I'll be forming my grip to make sure I've got a good grip. And then I draw with the same grip pretty much as I will shoot with. So I don't draw and then, you know, fuddle around with it. Cause now I've messed with all of my anchors in that process. Okay. So what I do is I, I get my hand, I, I dive it up into there, into the grip, get it set real good. And then what I'll do is the only way I change my grip is whenever I draw, just to keep the bow steady and things, I'll kind of put my fingers down like this. I'll draw up, make sure I get a good draw process. And then as soon as I'm drawn, what I'll do is I'll take my fingers and I'll just do this. I might put a little bit of index on there just so I don't feel like I'm going to grip it after I shoot, but I'll basically just put like that as the most grip. So getting a good grip uh, on your bow is going to be the first step into making sure that you know you get a good shot process. Next is using anchoring tools. So obviously I used to make some nose buttons to make sure that I can be consistent with that anchor. Uh, also you can just tie string around there or you know there's been little speed knocks things like that that will work perfectly well as a nose button. But the main thing is really important is to make sure that you've got a good anchor with your grip first then with your nose on the string right and then also whenever you anchor in the back i've got on my website some anchor rings that i've designed and printed to help make sure you're getting a good anchor and those aren't meant to be used all the time they're meant to be used during your training and everything to make sure you're consistent but if you feel like you know it's working for you it's something you can use all the time i had one shop owner that was over in pennsylvania that actually used these anchor rings for one of his uh students that he was teaching to shoot and she ended up going to win like the uh i think it was like eight ten year old or something like that she ended up go using those anchor rings to go uh, win the state finals in that age group so amazing story there but it's good it's a really about the consistency to make sure you've got something consistent and make sure that you're consistent in that thing that you're doing all the time and that's going to be key to being a good archer so to wrap the bow section up here i just want to say what's really important is making sure that you've got good anchors and you've got good form and you're consistent you know another thing that a lot of people don't talk about is your elbow some people uh you know they lock their elbow and their shoulder out and you see how whenever i'm locked out so just bending my elbow just by bending my elbow a little bit, just by bending my elbow a little bit, I'm gonna set my shoulder in the right spot. So if I'm locked out, another thing that's gonna happen is my shoulder's gonna be out and now I'm gonna start moving a lot more. So just by barely 
extending my elbow downwards, I'm going to put my shoulder in the right position as well. Now, a lot of people don't talk about the shoulder position. They talk more about the you know elbow and having not being fully extended. But again, there's a lot of things that go into it that you really need to focus on. If you want me to do a further video on this, to go dive a little bit deeper into that. There's already a lot in there. I don't feel like I can really add much to it. But if you want to hear me talk about it, just leave a comment down below and let me know that you want to hear me talk about you know how I do my grip and my uh, draw form and all that stuff. Next, a lot of people love to go see new broadheads. And again, I'm not dishing new broadheads because I think there's some really good technology uh, that can you know, make a really clean ethical kill and do it consistently is a big thing as well. A new broadhead is not really gonna fix accuracy issues that you had. It's not gonna fly so much better than your current one that you've got that you are you know able to put more animals on the ground. So the main thing is, is getting with your bow uh, and your arrow setup, making sure you get it accurate and you can shoot consistent uh, in the same point. And then whenever your accuracy is fixed, then the rest is going to follow. Well, the broadhead does is make the penetration into the animal and to make sure that it's going to be a clean, ethical kill. Now, if they re release new technology or you try in a new broadhead that you know you think that has something in it that is going to make things better, it's going to break bone better or whatever the deal is, you know, then yes, I by all means go try it out. I am an avid tinkerer. I love tinkering with this stuff, but I don't think people should feel like they have to get it or like they're missing something by not having it. And I think that's a really big problem. And we also get a lot of uh, FOMO, especially with everything online here. And I'm, again, I'm guilty of this. I'm gonna point the finger at myself as well, but we get a little bit of FOMO. We see a new product out there and we wanna try it and we just swipe that card and you know go out and buy more stuff. And I think the, that mentality is not necessarily a positive thing in our industry because it's making people a little bit more cynical about the entrance to or the fee to enter into this sport and you know to go and harvest their own animals and i just want people to be out there working with their best skill using their best skill in the field to do that same thing so whenever i first started i was shooting allen broadheads i know they've become kind of, kind of become a, a meme or a joke you know that there are these little ten dollar you know uh, uh chinese broadheads that are released that are just like not worth anything but i mean I, i've put down my first two deer i think with those Allen broadheads. And it was because I was using a low poundage bow, shooting short range, shooting at small animals like, you know, Texas deer. And, you know, I was able to make sure, make a clean kill shot. Well, then, you know, say you got to ask yourself the question, okay, well, now I'm going to go hunt something bigger. I'm going to go hunt, uh, you know, Wisconsin deer. I'm going to go hunt deer in Iowa, which are much, much bigger than the deer down here in Texas. There's much more tissue to go through. Do I need to go up to a higher poundage bow? Do I need to get better broadheads that are going to be more durable? I think absolutely you know and like i say if there's failures in a product that's going to be the one of the big things that make you want to get a new product but if everything's working the way it should i really don't see a need to make a big change don't feel like you have to change on that same scope there uh i'm working with uh, some people here and we're actually designing a broadhead i'm not going to say and release any details on that but i just want to i want to offer something innovative and something lethal and something that's low maintenance and you know those those things are are something that's really good now if you've got the same design of a you know the <laughs> for instance i've seen some broadheads out there recently that are almost exact copies of you know existing you know mechanical broadheads that really don't bring anything to the field They're like oh we just got thicker blades now it's like oh okay it's definitely an improvement but what have you really brought to the table here? But the main purpose of a broadhead, just to keep it really succinct, is to make sure it's gonna be a durable cutting edge that will make its way through an animal, not into, but through an animal to create the most damage so that we have a clean ethical kill, right? And that's the big thing is we wanna be ethical and we wanna be efficient with that process. So Let's talk about arrows. So arrows, arrows are an interesting topic for me because I've shot so many different kinds of arrows. I got a box in the garage here that literally has about 15 different kinds of arrows in it. I've been a big tinker and you know, I'm trying to pull every little last inch out of my setup and to make sure that everything is working in harmony. And I've tinkered with arrows 
so much it's kind of ridiculous and now we've got this where we're literally just literally splitting hairs where we work like well i don't want an arrow that's a 0 0.003 straightness you know three thousandths of an inch you know i want one that's a one thousandth of an inch and hey that's great and if your competition archery is your thing i think that is 100 percent necessary the chances of you being able to tell the difference between a 1,000 straightness and a 3,000 straightness are very slim. If you've been doing this for 35 years and you've built, you know, 150 different kinds of arrows and get, that really matters to you, great. But what's interesting, like I say, is I think the building process of the arrow is much more important than what arrow you're building. So I've gone through a lot of different arrows. I've shot Eastern arrows. I've shot Victory arrows. And one thing is whenever I was in the Victory arrow thing, I was always buying the Elites, the 0.001, 1,000 straightness arrows. I think I was really missing out on something. I was spending way more money because they're like 200 or $220 a dozen for like the Victory VAP SS, which were, by the way, were great arrows. Uh, but like I said, I think it was uh, like $220 a dozen of arrows. <laughs> I was spending a lot of money on these things, right? And what I found is once, you know, I heard and I talked to Dan Craft at Crafted Archery, I found that he's got some really great arrows, but there's nothing fancy about it. They're literally just straight carbon shafts, 0 .003 straightness. And once I started building these and I, I took more time to build the arrow properly and use high quality components, uh, I think that really changed the game for me because I found that I could get these 0.003 thousand straightness arrows in the same groups or even sometimes better groups uh, as the 0.001 straightness arrows just by spending more time tuning them. Just make sure you build it, make sure you spin that arrow. And one thing is if it doesn't spin right, that doesn't mean that arrow needs to be cast out. That was something I did early on too. I would, if I had an arrow that was, you know, would get a little bit of wobble on it, I would toss it out immediately. Now what I've found is that by tuning the arrow, by spinning it, rotating the insert, rotating the knock and things like that, you can fix some of those flight issues and make sure that it's flying exactly like the others. But by eking out that in your build, your arrow build, eking out that tolerance, you can really make sure that no matter which arrow you buy, it's going to fly straight and it's going to kill deer. Some of the technology in arrows like, you know, having stainless steel inside the arrows or, uh, you know, other things like that, that's going to really improve the durability of the arrow. And if you get like a 3K weave arrow versus a straight carbon shaft, also that's going to help because it's going to have less impact paradox, which is the flex that the arrow has whenever it makes impact with an animal, or it's going to recover from that better, I should say. Again, I, I go back to form. So if your form is not great, building a new set of arrows and buying a brand new new set of, you know, really fancy $220, $250 a dozen arrows is not going to make you more accurate and it's not going to make you more deadly. Focusing on your form, focusing on that accuracy and how that arrow is coming out of the bow and how that arrow is flying because you built it correctly is going to be way more important than having a new technology in an arrow. <laughs> Last thing I was going to talk about is releases and actually with a release, I have a lot different aspect, a lot different view on this. And it's really interesting because lately you've seen a lot of hunters going away from the uh, different uh, thumb buttons and other types of releases and going back to wrist strap releases because I've seen people like Cameron Haynes or uh, Dan from uh, Elk Shape going in there and starting to go hunting again with the wrist straps. So I've seen a lot of these changes come up recently and I think it's really interesting. But the thing again, you've always got to make sure is that you are being consistent with all that and find a release that works for you. So recently I found a release that just absolutely blows my mind and that is the Carter Mini Evolution. So the Carter Evolution is a back tension or what we'd actually call a tension activated release or basically it's got a spring in there that only allows that trigger to release whenever a certain amount of force, rearward force is exerted upon that release. So you can tune it for your setup. I've got mine set to 80 pounds. I can also shoot it with 70 pounds. But what this does is it allows you to really focus on that form. And again, making sure you're pulling through your shot and executing and you can't really punch it because if you jerk on it, your shot's going to go wild. So it forces you to really go through that process correctly. Now, if you're good with a wrist strap release and you can hook in there and really pull through and make that good shot, great. But if you're ever tempted to punch that trigger or if you're tempted to punch your thumb release, 
that might not be the release for you. So I really do encourage people to go to a bow shop with their setup, their properly tuned setup, and make sure that they are really focusing on that release and which one is the best and which one they're most accurate with. Because you'd be surprised to find that little things like the size of the thumb barrel, you know, the way that you shoot it, whether it's a tension re activated release, uh, thumb release, things like that, that can really make a big difference in how accurate your shot is. And you got to make sure that it works for you, that it feels good in the hand that that release is clean every time i think there is something to uh, a, a you know surprise shot that you know having a surprise shot can really make you more accurate in a lot of situations because uh, make sure that you're not torquing and, and doing undue stress upon the bow but also like i say it's just going to make sure that you're not overthinking that shot process but there are times i think that a non-surprise or a commanded release is necessary in certain hunting situations and things like that but it still needs to be done the right way so fine if you're that kind of person that you just actually do better with a commanded release on your shot you know you're more accurate with that i think that's something that should be looked into and maybe you need an, a, a release that you can do both ways that you can get a nice slow you know surprise release or you can get a really good commander shot but if you're seeing a disparity between the two i would go check out another release or you know try to find something that fits you a little bit better so a great way to try this is to do like three shots in a group on like a target at one dot and see what your shot looks like at 35, 40 yards with a commanded shot where you're actually pulling the trigger whenever you get on target. And then do the same thing where it's a complete surprise and see, you know, do probably, I wouldn't do just one group. I would do definitely like four or five groups like that and see which one's working better for you because there is a times with certain releases where that surprise release is not going to make you more accurate. So I really think that you should try this out and make sure that that's the best way to shoot for you. If the release you've got right now is working great for you and it feels good in the hand and you're accurate with it, then I wouldn't suggest changing anything. Um, sometimes they come out with new releases like the technology in them is, you know, you've got, okay, well now I've got a release that I can shoot as a thumb barrel or I can do, a, you know, a backwards tension on it or I can, uh, you know, fire it like a hinge or something like that. That's great. And those things are good to try. Uh, and also they just release new brands, have new releases that have just feel way better in your hand. Uh, and like I say, those are not a bad thing to try, but don't feel like you have to buy one just because the new one came out. Because again, uh, no matter how good that release is or how accurate it can be in somebody else's hands, it only makes a difference. And it only makes sense to purchase it if it's doing the same thing in your hands. And I think that's the overall arching me arch overarching message here is that you need to make sure that you know, yeah, so-and-so does really great with it. Your hunting buddy may do great with that release or whatever that tool is, that bow. But I think you need to make sure that it's working right for you because these things are not one size fits all. And sometimes you'll be surprised that even the cheaper releases or the cheaper bows and everything, you might be able to shoot that better than something that just comes off the line, brand new flagship bow that, you know, costs, you know, fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars $1,600 bare bow you might be able to shoot an older bow better just because the grip or the draw cycle or something else fits you better so don't leave that bow behind if something's going on where you feel like there's an issue with the bow take it to a bow shop go get it checked out make sure everything's still on top and make sure it's tip top and accurate and if those arrows are leaving the bow correctly and the arrows are tuned correctly so that they're flying right then you're going to be much more accurate in yourself and anything else anything else that's out there it's really going to be up to you and your form and you practicing and now the last thing last little bit is i want to say don't over practice as well i see some guys out there i think they have to shoot 100 arrows a day in order to be good at this it's not true at all in fact there's been several times where i've taken a month off come back to my bow and you know i've just been traveling for work and i'm not just giving up archery but i've taken a month off and i come back to it and i was a way better shot because I had gotten out of some of the bad practices that I was doing. And so by taking a month off, I was able to much more accurately shoot my bow and get back to the fundamentals, the fundamentals that made me a better shot. So thanks for watching, guys. Uh, thanks for checking out the video. I really appreciate it. I'm trying to do more videos here. I've been traveling. I've literally been on the road uh, almost every week since January. And so whenever I've been home, it's been family time. So pro I, sorry I haven't released more videos lately, but I do have more coming in the pipe. Uh, if you have any ideas, 
comment down below. If you disagree with everything I just said, please comment down below. I love having a discussion. If you look at the comment sections of any of my videos, I respond to almost every comment that y'all leave on the video. So go check it out. If you want to have a discussion, I'll love to talk to you about it and uh, have an open discussion with everybody. So uh, as far as me, last little update, I've been doing great. So I'm still on the carnivore diet. I've been doing about 90, 95% carnivore. I've been adding in the protein here to make sure I'm hitting those protein goals. And I've been staying fit, living healthy, and living my best life, guys. So I encourage you to do the same thing. Check out the sponsors below so that you can uh, you know, get a good deal on some supplements and some archery gear if you choose to upgrade. <laughs> if you are looking for the gear, you're in the market because you've broken all your arrows and you need some new ones, uh, you go check out the Crafted archery links down there uh pair it with some easy veins great veins best ones i have ever used uh aaron snyder just recently tried them out and he loved them as well and said hey why do anything else because these are absolutely great so go check it all out guys thanks for supporting the channel i love you and as always keep defying the odds